Good evening and welcome to the Congo Hour. I am your host, Wayna Dobson. Trippy has the evening off. Um, however, we will have my favorite part of the show, which is Sammy's Corner. Um, I want to start off by saying thank you, thank you, thank you so much to Songs of Inspiration. They gave me my two tickets to go to the Mother's Day celebration at the Leo Corps Center on Mother's Day, and I'm so grateful. And I said to them, we sh I said, we'll have a limousine picking us up or what? And they told me that my sister, my friend, Lady Charmaine Lane, has a limousine. So I'm just trying to figure out how come I haven't gotten a telephone call yet, um, Lady Lane. Um, call me after the show so we can figure out what time the limousine is picking me up and my guests. Okay. So <laughs> I want to say thank you to Lapa. We have, um, can, I don't know, we have the, I'm excited. We have new furniture in here. So can, can we get a picture of the furniture? Nice furniture. And you see my um, first guest that we have on this evening, so we might as well just go right into the interview because I want to make sure that we're on time for Sammy's Corner. So um, first guest is Brother Omar, who has a um, hit stage play coming up this month, May the 16th at William Penn High School. Welcome to the nice. Congo welcome, Hour. Welcome, and it's starring Wayne Dawson. Ah, <laughs> starring me, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, no, we, we got a play coming up May 16th at Wilm Penn High School, uh, 713 East Basin Road, uh, 7 p.m. Isaiah Turner, it's a story about a young man who learns the true value of love, friendship, and responsibility after experiencing some painful events in his life. Um, it's a remake of what I did uh, back in 2005 uh, at the Women's Drama League. And, uh, about a year ago, I decided, you know, I need to bring this play back because it has so much powerful messages, and I just kind of updated it to the 2015 version, and uh, so here we are. You did a very good job <laughs> uh, updating thank you. it. <laughs> thank you, thank you. So you brought one of oh, yeah. my team and cast yeah. members. You want to uh, introduce uh, these? Uh, hey, Kwame. Uh, Kwame and T. Um, and Kwame, what part are you playing? Um, I'm playing Wayne. Wayne, yeah. okay. And tell me a little bit about Wayne without really telling it all. Um, Wayne is, uh, he's a, uh, he's kind of like a, I want to call him a knucklehead. Um, he know that he, he does the wrong thing, but he continues to do them. But um, he's, a, he, he's a great character, man. Smart guy, you know. Uh, okay. I don't know, I don't know what else to say okay, without giving it away. That's fine. Um, well, I'm Keisha, and <laughs> when Omar, I don't know whether you text me, call me, or whatever, I and think ask me. It was Facebook. I Facebook think. Yeah, me, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and asked me if I wanted to be um, play a part of the play. Now I've been like behind the scenes, um, helping with producing and marketing plays, but never actually in a play. Right. So I said, okay. So when I get my script, I'm reading it, I'm like, I really have to get into character. <laughs> um, Keisha is um, Isaiah's ex-girlfriend. Ex <laughs> and she does all that she can to keep her child away from Isaiah. Boy, now tell me what made you pick me uh, to play that part? Uh, well, you know, I, was, I had some characters available and I wanted to be creative. I, I wanted to, to, to bring us uh, some local stars. I was talking to someone else about, you know, trying to bring some local stars. And I said, you know, Wayne, is, is it so respectable and, and well, well known? Because I was thinking about, you know, new, newswoman uh, narrator. So you know what? That's too easy. That's, that's Wayne. Why not try to do something a little, a little different? And, and I think that, that character is, 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 um, is very important because you hear about the men who don't take care of their children. But here, here's, a, here's a gentleman who wants to take care of his child, but, but he's forbidden to do so because of the beef he, him and his uh, ex-girlfriend has. So right. let, let, let's show the other side to it. I know, but you watch The Pew, you watch The Congo <laughs> Hour. Right, right. You know how I am pro, like, oh, fathers being in their children's right. lives. Right. So I really, I mean, I really have to get into character. Oh, yeah. See, when you play that character, they get to see firsthand what you're actually seeing, the message that you're trying to get through. So. <laughs> yeah, it, it's very, it's very good, um, and I love rehearsals. You get us in and out. Um, right. It's Fears. very the any feet. See, I wasn't going to tell that part. 
<laughs> trying to lose some weight here. Oh, okay. He feeds us. That's he right. takes real good care of us. So, yeah, I appreciate that. Well, that's just that. my appreciation because you can, write, you can write a script, but if you don't have the actors in it, you know, it's just going to sit there and dust, you know. Yeah, so, and, and you have a great them. support team. Miss Jones. Oh, yeah, Miss Miss uh, Miss Autumn Jones and uh, Miss LeVon Robinson, the assistant director. See, I, I'm more an uh, actor and playwright, mm -hmm. so I, I, I kind of do a little bit of directing, but I, I allow the, the plus they, they say ladies are smarter than men. Is that true? Man? Is that true? Yeah, that's what I hear. Too. Okay, so, so, so I let them take okay, it. Okay. I like to do the directing, but it's a wonderful cast. Like, we age from 10 to, now, oldest is 89 years old. He's he's like, now, he's, he's I'm awesome. not, I'm, <laughs> I asked him, I'm like, how do you, I mean, he has a big part, and he, like, remembers his lines. I'm struggling <laughs> with, with my few lines I have, and it's like, he's just rolling. Well, it's just, just, just take practice, you know, just this is the years I've been an actor, you know, you just keep constantly, what I, just, what I try to do is I don't do a, a lot at once. Mm -hmm. I do a little bit here, a little bit there, and just, just keep saying it over and over and over right. again, you know, on, on, a, on a daily basis. So right. It just takes, takes practice, so. You know, some, some people do it better if they work with someone, mm -hmm. but um, they highlight their lines, and so everyone has I did highlight my lines. I was proud. I was like, I, I, I highlighted my lines, but getting them to memory, that's a whole new different story. Well, that's what but I was going to say, it. it's, I'm going to have them down pack come um, time okay. for, for the curtains to okay, open. Okay, there you go, right. there you yeah. go. Yeah. So, once again, let's talk about um, the name of the play, where it is, the cost, and how the viewing audience okay. can get tickets. Right. Isaiah Turner is going to be performing on uh, Saturday, May the 16th at Wilmington High School, 713 East Basin Road, Newcastle, Delaware, 19720. You can call me for tickets at 302-743-2067. That's $20 for adults, 15 for seniors and students. So okay. it's a wonderful production. So I had someone who said that they saw that it was that we're going to have it. Heard it on me talking about it on the Congo Hour right. and said they were coming. So please, 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 I'm asking all of our Congo Congo viewers to please call Brother Omar and get your ticket um, to come and support this um, awesome play that has a great um, storyline to it. Right. So thank you, Brother Omar, uh, for you. coming on. And I and have to thank God for allowing me to see another birthday today. So Today's your birthday. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. And I got oh, happy yeah, birthday. Yeah, this is my first time on the Congo Hour. So hey, man, you know, that's happy what's up. Happy birthday. Oh, I wish oh, I would have known that we would have, um, oh, we don't have any pom-poms or anything. Okay. Can, can yeah. we sing? <laughs> <laughs> Happy good, birthday. Oh, well, thank you for allowing us to come on. You Most know. definitely. My pleasure. All right. So I'm going to take a quick break and I will be on with my next guest. Good evening and welcome back to the Congo Hour. I just love my next guest. When I think of her, I think of being incredible, and that's who she is, the incredible one, Darnielle Jervy. How are you, beautiful? I'm good, good. and thank you so much for that. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> I had the opportunity to attend one of your workshops, mm -hmm. and I took plenty of notes. Are you using and those notes And you know what, now? and I do, okay, I, but I need, I really need to, I mean, all jokes aside, I really need to, like, really push mm -hmm. and do those things, especially the money part. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the hardest part. That is the hardest part. It is so hard for people to realize that they could charge more and to get the courage to actually say it. Right. I think, you know, the mindset that goes along with that is it's huge, but it'll make a big difference once you actually get the hang of it. So right. you set the practice. So you used to it now, right? I'm it like comes it. natural. Yes, yes indeed. <laughs> so tell the viewing audience a little bit about yourself, and then we'll go into the event okay, that you're having. Okay, awesome. So I am Danielle A. Jervy, and I am the CEO of Incredible One Enterprises. And we are a business optimization firm. We're headquartered here in Newark, Delaware. And we work with what I like to call uncompromising entrepreneurs and business owners who truly desire to experience financial and spiritual abundance in their lives because of their businesses. We help them to really find out what's wrong with their business and plug the holes so that they can make more money and build wealth centers for themselves, their families, and their communities. Mm -hmm. And I wanna say, like, when someone calls you it's like they, they're ready to make an investment in their life. Usually, yes. I mean, you know, we do have some people who really want to figure out how to grow their business that mm -hmm. have never made an investment. And gotcha. so it's a different kind of conversation. Mm -hmm. But the majority of the people who call and reach out to us are serious. They are what I call uncompromising and ready to do whatever it takes 
to learn how to build their business and serve more people. Okay, so May the 20th through the 22nd, you have a incredible factor event coming yes. at the Chase Center. Let's yes. talk about and it. And it's funny that we were talking about money because our theme this year is positioned to profit. Okay. So we're gonna talk about what it takes to get profitable. And you know, what I'm, what I'm really excited about is we have more than 200 entrepreneurs and business owners who are coming from all over the world mm -hmm. to here in Wilmington. And um, I'm gonna teach them what they need to learn to really grow their businesses. I've been able to take my own business from low five figures to over seven figures in a very short period of time. Okay, now wait a minute. Well, I know things have changed. Things <laughs> Come have changed. on, girl. <laughs> you were six figures yes, the last yes, time yes. we talked. We, we are now, now over seven. Okay. Yes. So it's for me. It's it's, and I don't say that to brag. I say it because I think it's everybody's birthright. I believe right. that God wants us all to experience abundance and whatever that means for us. Mm -hmm. And if you are a business owner, you solve problems for profit. Right. And so if you're not profiting at the end of the day, you need to learn what it is that I teach my clients. Our clients experience anywhere from 50 to 600 percent growth in 12 months mm -hmm. or less, mm -hmm. which is major. Right. And so we're doing this three-day event to teach my positioned and profitable blueprint to show business owners how they can make a big change in their business in the next right. year. I'm so glad that we have you um, on, Tarnia. We have our viewers range from all different ages, mm -hmm. all different races, and I love the fact that they can watch television see someone that's local, mm -hmm. not someone that's way in another different state, and say, okay, like, okay, if she did it, I can do oh, it. Because yeah. God has no respect of person. Right. What he did for you, he'll, he'll do, do for, for me the, or right. do for whoever. Absolutely. So. And I mean, I'm, I'm just like every single one of you. If you cut me, I'm going to believe. Mm -hmm. I put my pants on one leg at a time, too. Um, you just have to be willing to do the work. So, you know, to the youngest aspiring entrepreneur who's watching right now, don't give up. When someone tells you no, know that no just means next opportunity and find another way to get access to what you need in order to make the difference mm -hmm. that you aspire to make. Yes. Now, what is the investment for your event? Well, we have something special for viewers of the Congo Hour. Okay. If you go to the website right now, it'll be about $1,000 to attend. But y'all from Delaware, just like <laughs> me, so we're going to hook you up. So. If you call my office tomorrow, I'll give you the number in a second, we're gonna allow you to save $500 on your ticket. Okay. Okay, so 302-525-2899, I'll repeat it, 302-525-2899. And I just have to tell you, this is a drop in the bucket of what you'll be able to earn if you come and learn the system and apply it. I know the things that you've used mm -hmm. and you've tried have worked for you. If you keep pushing it, you'll continue mm -hmm. to make money and the same will go for you guys. So Troy, I would like Troy to put the number up. Will you be kind of say the number yes, one more absolutely. time? Absolutely. Three zero two, of course. Five two five two eight nine nine. Now, you're, you're featured speakers. They're, they're coming from all over. They're coming from all over. We have a few that are right here from Delaware that are my clients. And then we have people from Arizona and Texas and California. I mean, they're coming from all over. Experts in their own particular mm -hmm. areas of in industry of interest because I wanted to make sure that we created a very well-rounded event. Like, I'm amazing at marketing and business growth mm -hmm. strategy. But I'm not the expert when it comes to social media, right? I'm not the expert when it comes to networking and, and how to leverage networking to grow your business. I'm not the expert when it comes to real estate and how to use real estate in order to experience growth at another level. So we've brought some of the most amazing experts we could find mm -hmm. in to teach our entrepreneurs mm -hmm. and attendees. I like that because sometimes you run into people who think they have all the answers mm -hmm. for everything oh, yeah. but really only have a few things that they're sufficient in that's right but won't allow someone else to come in and help help someone absolutely. else absolutely yeah i mean i i learned a long time ago i am not the master of everything i i can stay in my lane and i can rock my lane mm -hmm. and i'm going to align myself with other people who can help me to get what i don't have access to okay some some viewers may know who you are, some may not. Will you be kind and share your story of how you were, I mean, you were in corporate and mm -hmm. how you left? Oh, yeah, Let's sure. talk about that. So yeah, so I'm, I'm born and raised here in Delaware. Um, pro professionally, I started, um, when I graduated from the University of Delaware, I started working at MBNA. I was there for about 12 years. I left there as a vice president, and then I started my own Mary Kay Cosmetics business. So you may have seen me driving around in my pink Cadillac back in the day. 
I did that for two years full time and then I decided that sitting behind someone else's desk was just not what God had for me. So I stepped out on faith and I started Incredible One Enterprises. And we've struggled. I do not want to lead you guys to believe that I woke up, I went to bed a blunder and I woke up a wonder. No. <laughs> it has been a journey and a process, but I've done the work and I've kept pressing even when the odds were against me. And I'm excited that I have because I know that I'm on a mission from God and I just have such an amazing gift to share with other people. Okay. So recap one more time yeah. for me. So May 20th through the 22nd at the Chase Center on the riverfront, Position to Profit, it's our annual event. We're expecting 200 plus entrepreneurs from all over the world to come and learn my Positioned and Profitable Blueprint. If you have a business and your business is not generating the kind of money you know it can, I'm gonna encourage you to stop what you're doing, change your plans, call out sick, do whatever you need to do to get your hands on this information because it will help you to create a wealth spring for yourself, for your family, and for our community. Okay, and the number we have up by 252899 yep, that's is our your office. number. Yep. So please um, give her a call, flood her phone <laughs> yes, um, so that you can get that incredible discount that she's going to give to the Congo viewer, which is you, for calling in on this evening. Is there anything else that you would like to share, Danielle? You know what? I think the one thing that I would just want to leave everybody with is whatever your dream is, just just believe in it yourself. You may never have anyone else who rises up and, and gives you the encouragement that you need, but you making that decision, decision on your own will make a difference. And I just believe that when, as soon as you decide God and his abundant universe, mm -hmm. they all conspire to bring you what you want. Keep pressing, keep realizing that the world needs you. Ooh, that was good. <laughs> that was real good. Thank you so much for coming Thanks on for and sharing. Thanks for having me. You're I welcome. appreciate it. Going to take a break and we'll be back. Good evening and welcome back to the Congo Hour. We have a few more minutes before Sammy's Corner. So I'm asking his guest, um, who Trippy and I call Little Butch, to come on and we're gonna talk about the fight last night. Little Butch. <laughs> <laughs> what, honestly, what did you think about the fight? Uh, I expected a little bit more. For all, for all the hype and everything that everybody what? talked about. <laughs> I expected it to be a I little was bit more. so disappointed. I really was. And here's the crazy thing. I was going to order. Well, we was going to order it. I'm like, no, because I might fall asleep. Right. So I got up. I got dressed. I went to a fight party. I was so disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> From Jamie Foxx on, I right. was disappointed. I wanted, like, more. Yeah. For, for the amount of money that they got paid, I think, at, at the end of, the, at the, end of the, uh, the box office, I think, Mayweather is making about 180 million and yes. Pacquiao's 120 million. Right. I think they should have been a little bit more aggressive <laughs> for that amount of money for us to watch it for 12 right. rounds. <laughs> I was I was upset with Mayweather and it's all over social media like him running around the ring. Yeah, I, I felt like I don't I was I mean we waited years for this to come mm -hmm. and it was such a letdown to me. Yeah. So you think it's going to be a rematch? Absolutely not. It's over. <laughs> it's, it's done. It's done. It's absolutely <laughs> over. And then Pacquiao said something about his shoulder or something was hurting and after that, so I, I don't know what that was all about. But wait, either. he thought he won. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't do much to win. <laughs> what made him think that though? Like none of his punches like really landed. Nah. I mean, he was. He said, I think he said that since Mayweather didn't do anything, he figured that he won because he threw, oh. he hit him a couple more times than Mayweather did. So he was talking about that. So that's what I he don't thought. Know. I don't know what he saw. That's not the fight I saw. <laughs> So no more, what's, no nah. more Mayweather and Pacquiao? Nah, but Mayweather's fighting in September, I think he said, because he has to fight one more in his contract in September. And then uh, he's one away from Rocky Marciano's record, so he'll probably end up doing that too. So, so. 49 and 0. Yeah. Well, he has to get 50. He'll he tie it with 49, 50. so he'll have to fight one more after that. So we have two more fights to go. He's saying no, but I'm thinking when the money's out there, since he's about money, he'll, he'll do it again. So, and I thought, who's he, who's he gonna fight again? I mean, who is he going to fight? Oh, I don't know who his next fight is, but oh, he, he okay. has one more in his contract yeah. to fight, so okay. he has to select somebody to fight with. And it's going to be in September. In September, yeah. So do you think the tickets are going to cost as much as? No, nah, I don't think anybody will watch I was going to say it'd probably be a $100 <laughs> ticket. Right. <laughs> to $9.99 to order on pay-per-view, yeah. or they might just run it on HBO for nothing. Yeah. I mean, he's a good fighter. I, I just, I was personally wanted Pacquiao to win. Okay. Um, just because I think that he's a, uh, needed to be humbled. I mean, he's a little, I, he's a little, little exciting, a little bit, uh, 
much to watch sometimes. Right. <laughs> some of his conversations. He's very um, arrogant. And some people say he's just confident. Right. Which I don't know. And he has a lot of um, issues, personal issues, <laughs> that he needs to deal with as well. Yeah. So, yeah. But we'll see what happens. And it was on Facebook that Pacquiao was the true winner because he loves the Lord. So. And I can respect that. Yes. But he lost. <laughs> <laughs> no matter how you try to no shoot it, he impressed. lost. Okay. All right, so I'm going to take a break. Mr. Congo should be here shortly because okay. we're going to, um, you're going to come back on Sammy's Corner and talk about um, the upcoming reference. The up, yeah, which is going to be May, May 27th. May 27th. Yes. Okay, all right. So stay tuned for Sammy's Corner. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Congo Hour with the, uh, I guess, the Sammy's Corner s section of it, which I'm proud of tonight. Uh, Wayna says this is her favorite uh, part of the program, and I'm sure tonight she, both of us will share that same thought. I am proud to have my, my nephew, who is from the, the Christina. Christina School District. The, the, the Christina School District. And he's here to encourage folks to uh, take a, a second look at whether or not they should sign for the referendum. And I'm not going to waste a lot of time because I don't, I'm not as uh, on top of it as uh, I call him Dr. Ingram. And so I'm going to uh, turn it right over to him immediately so he can educate us on how important uh, being a part of the referendum really is. Dr. Ingram. Uh, thank you. I'm working on that for you. I'll make sure I have that done for the end of the summer. Uh, yes, it's, it's, uh, it's important because uh, the Christina School District, as we all know, is going out for an operating referendum on May the 27th. Uh, the reason being is that there is an economic shortfall at the present time. And what school districts, not just the Christina School District, but what school districts do essentially is every three to five years, they have to go out and ask the community for an increase in taxes to be able to support uh, existing programs and things that are going on into the school. Uh, so what we're asking for on May 27th for the Christina School District essentially is a 37 cent increase in taxes, which based on the assessed value of the homes in the Christina School District is approximately $15 per month uh, in, in the increase in their taxes to be able to help support the students in the Christina School District. You know, that, that is so interesting. Um, you know, we talk so much about our youth and how bad they are and all that stuff. And, 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 and yet we aren't willing to give them the kind of support systems to get them focused on what it is they're supposed to be, to be a good citizen. Uh, right. they, they half uh, uh, pay the, the school district right. so it can function properly. Right. And, and so everything in my mind, if, if we don't get a raise every, 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 every year, Everybody is kicking and biting and screaming, saying, I didn't even get a raise, and everything else went up. Right. Now, the school district is saying, I want a raise so I can do my job. Right. And yet we're saying that, go do your job without a raise. Right. And that's impossible. Right. So, or, or somebody gets hurt in, in the process. Right. So, that's what we have to articulate to the folks, that we want better students through better schools right so we can have a better community. Right, because essentially it's pretty much what you just said is that you know, you're working off the same monies that you received three years ago, but there's increasing costs every year. Um, and the biggest misconception out there with districts is that they're not fiscally responsible, they've been irresponsible, but in all actuality, our district has been very responsible with the last re uh, received funds. And it's basically over a three year period as well, so I don't want people to misunderstand. It's, it's essentially 28 cents the first year, and then a five cents the second year, and then four cents the third year. So it's not all at once either. So all people have to do is uh, not go to Applebee's right. once a month, and we'll, it won't hurt them. No. Fifteen dollars. Fifteen dollars a month on average. On, on an average, average of what's going on. That that means that are there. <laughs> you know, it's amazing to think that that people would even take a second thought about educating 
children. Right. And, and I think that basically most of this is in an area where people can't support themselves. Right. Isn't that true? I would say that. And it so we will send money to Europe to feed people, yet at home where we're really having a real problem, right. we're you know kind of reluctant to say, yes, I think that $15 a month I'm willing to, to put up to see if we can't have a better community. Right. I think what a lot of people are focusing on is not what you just exactly said, is the students. They're just focusing on the number. And I think that we have to really uh, take a hard look at what it is that's, that's going to happen for our students if we are able to give that increase. It's not so much about the number as the overall importance of the students' academic success and just building them and giving them the basic fundamental skills to be successful. I think we're doing a great disservice if we don't give them that additional support to be able to be successful. Especially in the urban communities, we talk about, you know, my school in particular at Bancroft uh, Elementary, they're dealing with so many different things that they need that additional support and that some of those supports that are funded through these resources are additional guidance supports, um, uh, ability for them to be able to talk to people for some of the trauma and things that they're dealing with, um, giving them f uh, more exposure to the arts programs and music programs and those types of things. And I think that's critically important for them to be successful because we have to understand that all students learn differently. No students learn the same, so we have to be able to provide them with the mechanism to be successful with that. Well, I, I just think that I hope that we're getting across and I hope that people are paying attention and go tell their neighbors about the importance right. of even voting. Right. You know, not, not only for the referendum, but to vote from now on right. ar ar around everything so that they can be a better uh, citizen. Right. And the, uh, the more that they uh, uh, vote in many, many things, right the better this community will be. And I'm talking about Delaware, I guess. Right. And, and, and I guess uh, not only do we want, uh, I guess we want our state representatives and senators to be able to convince the lower counties the importance of supporting right. uh, these kind of issues when, when they come up. I mean, they should almost be lobbyists. Right. Uh, uh, I don't know how uh, uh, involved our, our folks up north are with trying to convince folks in the, in the lower counties to, 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 to get the kind of dollars right. that, that, that's required. I know there's been a lot of groups out there that have been trying to you know, talk to, to those down in Dover just to kind of figure out a different formula to be able to support schools in terms of the way funding goes. I know for us particularly now, what we're doing to get the information out to the community, we're doing a lot more of the door-to-door -door type interactions to let people know exactly what's going on. I know that all the schools in the Christina School District in particular are holding events to have parents um, to be able to come out to hear the information. And we also realize that uh, there's not an opportunity for some parents to be able to get to the school, so we're actually going to them. And it's interesting that you would talk about us getting you know, the, the representatives and those individuals more involved. We're trying to get on some of their programs to be able to speak at some of their uh, meetings that they're having. Um, I know that we are looking to talk to the city council as well to go you know, during our public comment opportunities, be able to talk to them and kind of just share with them what's going on with respect to that. I know there's civic association meetings that we've been attending. Uh, we've had some town hall meetings with our respective areas that we've been attending as well, just to kind of let everybody know what's going on and the importance of it because ultimately, as we've talked about before, uh, the community, the, the community, the children's success is tied into the community's success, and we want to make sure that the community overall is successful, and our students are those individuals that need it the most. You know, it's going to be I I interesting when I look at this picture, long range, right. 20 years from now, the kind of comments that the students will hear from their homes who don't support this referendum. The students will repeat that same kind of activity, and and other students will suffer right. as a result of the attitudes and the lack of information that we give to our our, our children. It was interesting to me that the uh, the uh, concerned citizens of Baltimore and how it became so unable to control. We had to call the National right. Guard in. 
But when the parents got involved and put that line between the people that were unhappy and the police, right. it just went away. Right. We have to have that parental awareness right. and involvement to allow even the students to recognize that these parents are concerned about them. Right. And they're voting for a referendum, and so many people say no more taxes. But the taxes is the only way that we'll ever survive as a prominent and productive society. Right. Where else do you get money for, right. for education? Right. Where else do you get money for, for roads and that kind of stuff? You know, we have to have taxes. Absolutely. And so $15 more a month right. to change the, 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 the whole way we live today right. and if we could if someone would say to me sammy you got to give fifteen dollars this give it to whoever it might be um i know people have this perception of me that i can afford <laughs> it but you know if 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 it wasn't even true right i believe that i would give up a a a, a uh, real wonderful meal at applebee's or wherever that i might right. go to eat a hot dog sandwich on right. that night right. and still get the fulfillment of a, of a good meal without having the, the, the elaborate uh, Applebee's right. background and being served and all that. If I knew that, that students were going to be able to, uh, to uh, be successful right. as a result of that sacrifice that I made, and life is all about sacrifice. Right. And I think we as adults, um, have an obligation to our kids Absolutely. and, and, and if in if $15 as you stated before is that is that change necessary then I think that we all should be able to do that we all were kids once we've all needed support from adults and it's, it's it's equally important that we think about them in this and not just so much about ourselves I think that a lot of times what happens is when you talk about money and you talk about numbers and people get caught up in things that are not important um, they, they get caught up in who's responsible or who did this or who's, who, who did that. And it's really not about that. It's really about what we can do to support the kids moving forward. Um, it's not about who, it's about them. And that's the most important thing. It's all about what we do when we have to. Right. I can remember like maybe two or three months ago to fill my car up, it cost me $90. Right. Now I can fill it up with $45. Right. Now what did I do with that $40 because I have a $40 tank right. and so it, it, that $1 per gallon right. that I saved or anybody else has saved right. could be that. Nobody complained when fuel was high because they did what they thought right. was good for them right. and they did what they did. I mean, I didn't see anybody double riding and all that they, right. they had the money but i think it's it's people's attitude not being aware of what they do hurts right and and i think that this referendum will surely affect poor people right and this district uh helps poor people Right. That's where poor, poor people are. Right. And people are saying, I'm not going to help them. They're lazy and all right. that stuff. You know, it's, it's because they don't have the resources to understand right. how to get out of that kind of experience right. that they're facing. So we create the problems by not uh, being proactive and, 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 and eliminating them. Right. We, and, and in our business, we, we, we call that preventive maintenance. Right. So. I think that that is where I would hope that after we've been on this Channel 28, how many weeks do we have to go? And they'll look at you and me every <laughs> week. And I hope that we can get through in telling the, the, the general public that it is so necessary. Take a second look at right. what it is that we're affecting. At, at the kids, when they go down the street and they see the kids walking down the street and they say he belongs in school uh, are they saying gee he's out of school because i didn't do what i was supposed right. to do right. and that's probably the, 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 
the real deal. Right. And all these people that have, that don't want to uh, help the have-nots, right. you know, right. I, I think it's awful and it's a crime. Right. Because in my mind, the haves have as a result of the have-nots not being be given. Right. So the have-nots are suffer because the haves didn't give the have-nots right. what they were supposed to give them right. when they were supposed to give them. Now is the time to give. Right. Absolutely. Well, is there anything that you want to say? Uh, we're going to have to get ready to close. Okay. Do you have any uh, words of wisdom to help us until next week? No, necess not necessarily words of wisdom, but I would just like to let everybody know that uh, the Christina School District is holding an operating referendum on May the 27th. Uh, all those ages 18 and older are eligible to vote, provided you just have a license or something that shows proof of, of residency in the Christina School District. And we encourage you to come out and vote on that particular day. Uh, just get the information. Uh, stop by any of the schools in the Christina School District, and we will share that information with you. There are a number of programs that we're going to be having over the next three weeks, three and a half, four weeks until May 27th arrives. And we hope that you know you make the best decision for yourself. And, and in making that decision, please make sure that you think about the kids because ultimately they are the ones uh, who need our support and who need us right now. I would like to say that when you don't vote, it gives the people who don't care about you an additional vote and it will allow them to win we want our kids to win. Please come out and vote. Until next week, we will hope that you will think about it, go out and knock on the neighbor's doors, and we'll be right back after a, a slight break here with community news and our funeral announcements.